Welcome to the studio. Now, before we dive into the details of the F200 and our print results, I want to ground this video really quickly. Fusion 3 did send me this printer, but they don't get to review this video and there was no payment involved. My goal here is the same as always. Use the printer, share what I like and what I don't like and who ultimately I think this machine is for. Now you're gonna notice that we are filming in our new studio. If you've watched a lot of 3D printing content, you've probably seen the same behind the bench talking head shots. I got tired of making those and I got tired of watching them. So we built this space to show the machines in a better way, more interesting, more deliberate, but still real. I know some folks are gonna see the lighting, they're gonna see the cameras, the, the edits, and they're gonna think, is this a marketing video? Oh, absolutely it's not. It's just me trying to match the visual quality to the quality of the conversation. See, 3D printing is a visual medium and these machines and you deserve it. I've been 3D printing for a long time. And when I was first getting into it, like I mean like really getting into it, there were two machine brands I kept coming back to, Fusion 3 and Raise 3D. Fusion 3 has been around for over a decade, quietly building commercial grade printers for schools, labs, and businesses that need reliability more than they do flash. Now, I'll be honest, I've wanted to try one of their machines for many years now. So when they reached out and offered to send the F200, I was genuinely excited. Now, I had a great conversation with their CEO before the printer even shipped, and she made one thing very clear. She wasn't looking for a marketing video. She wanted real content, real feedback, and honest insight. That actually means a lot to a content creator. It gives us the freedom to kind of create what we want. Fusion 3 is an American-made 3D printer company, and I know that the power supply and the electronics are sourced overseas, but everything else is local, and they're proud of that. So if you want to know exactly where and how they source everything, give them a call. They were so excited to share it with me, I am sure they'll answer all your questions and more. Let's start with what you're actually getting. The F200 is a welded steel chassis powder coated and built like something you'd expect to find in a research lab or on a production floor. It's also heavy. For the small amount of space that it takes up on the bench, it's really heavy. Definitely not cheaply made. The motion system is full core XY with linear rails on every axis like you'd expect. It uses Gates GT3 belts and an Orbiter 2 extruder and hardened dual gears. And it's not just spec sheet stuff, it actually feels tight. It feels confident, there's no slop. Everything about this machine feels engineered to take abuse. The door hinges are sturdy and heavy. The gantry doesn't flex, well, better not. And even the wiring is clean and tucked, like it was built by someone who cares what happens a thousand hours into your printing journey. The chamber is passively heated. That means that there's no heater element, but it's so well sealed that print jobs using ASA and polycarbonate stay stable. And I've seen the chamber hit 65C just from retained bed and nozzle heat alone. That's pretty impressive. And the bed system, wham bam PEI plate by default, magnetically mounted to a platform that's rated for 140C sustained. But it's also modular, which means that you can restack it for glass or even Bamboo Lab P1 or X1 plates can be used if you wanna do that. Now, before we go any further, I wanna call out a few things about this machine specifically, because this unit is a pre-production sample. Fusion 3 was still dialing in some of the final tooling and packaging when they sent this out. And that means that there are a couple things that might look a little different 
if you order one. For example, the logo on the front of the door, this one's a screen print. Production units will have a more refined version with a cleaner, bolder contrast. Same with the top window. It sticks up on mine slightly, but that's already been revised and lowered on the production run. Even the internal welds, these were done by hand for this unit, but production models will use fully fabricated frames from their welding jigs. Same structure, much cleaner look. The touchscreen ribbon cable is also rerouted in the final version. The packaging is fully updated and the camera is also being moved to the door for a better viewing angle during printing. Even the doorknob may be different uh, than what I have on my machine. None of this affects function, but if you notice your machine looks slightly different, that's why. Fusion 3 was super transparent about it and honestly I appreciated how open they were about what was changing and why. Manufacturing in the US, while it's not the cheapest, does mean that they can do quick turnarounds and respond fast when they want to improve something. And that's really important, kinda like it. All right, let's talk about actual print results. Now I've printed in PLA, ASA, and polycarbonate like I mentioned earlier, and every one of them came out great. No tuning, no babysitting, just solid, reliable prints. Now, one of the first prints I ran was a print-in-place adjustable wrench. It has moving threads and a working jaw straight off of the plate, and it turned out absolutely perfectly. That print alone shows off just how precise this motion system really is. I also ran some dimensionally accurate test parts pre-sliced by Fusion 3 to demonstrate their polycarbonate capabilities. These were printed using 3DX Tech PC, which if you've been around for a while, you already know is some of the best polycarbonate on the market. And I've used it since I started 3D printing many, many, many years ago. And the F200 handled it absolutely beautifully. Clean walls, tight dimensions, and no warping, which if you know polycarbonate is tough to have happen. And if you're wondering about the space these parts were printed in, the build volume is a clean 256 by 256 by 256 millimeter cube. And that's plenty for functional brackets, enclosures, jigs, whatever your projects or farms call for. Fusion 3 rates the printer for speeds up to 250 millimeters per second with travel speeds up to 500 millimeters per second and accelerations of 15,000 millimeters a second squared and flow rates up to 45 millimeters cubed per second, depending of course on the nozzle. But here's what I found more impressive. It's not just about hitting those numbers, it's about doing it while maintaining accuracy and that's exactly what the F200 does. Now, one thing I've noticed when it comes to US made 3D printers, when speaking with the owners, they are quick to point out how accurate they want their numbers to be and dislike how the industry has moved towards inflated print speeds as the norm. So the numbers I'm giving you, these are real world numbers that you're gonna see when printing in your office or print farms. Using the F200 is refreshing, and I mean that. For the past two years, nearly every new printer arrives with a stock implementation of Clipper Screen. It is truly refreshing to see other, more user-friendly and even custom interfaces on these machines. Everything is bright, easy to understand, and the touch screen is very responsive. No lag, no weird animations, just a clean interface that responds the moment you touch it. I really like the temperature readouts for the hot end and build plate, pulsing orange when it is heating, and we can see current temps and even the set point indicator. Additionally, the presets are nice. Two touches on the screen and your machine is heating, and there's a single button to shut off all the heating, which I use this a lot when I'm leaving the studio at night when I'm done working on these machines, so it's awful convenient. There's a diagnostics wizard that walks you through calibration and checks all built in. It even verifies nozzle offset and reruns probing if the results are inconsistent. That alone saves time, especially on first setup. And at the start of every job, it runs a heat clean cool sequence before probing. It takes a little bit longer, but it helps ensure that the nozzle is clean, the probe is consistent, and the first layer just works. That's a time trade-off I think I'll take over potentially losing prints any day. The slicer is called F3 Slicer. It's a rebranded Fusion 3 specific version of Prusa Slicer with all of their machine profiles and tuning baked in. So if you're using Prusa Slicer before, you'll feel right at home, but it's also locked in, so you don't need to really tweak anything at all. You'll be printing right away with one of the most popular slicing experiences that exists in our industry. Connecting to the printer is straightforward. Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or USB, no cloud required, and this is a big selling point for Fusion 3. Today, it feels like every brand of 3D printer out there wants us to connect to their model or print cloud. Fusion 3 isn't tethered to any cloud at all. You'll be printing the way you've always 3D printed 
for years to come. It's like you'll be 3D printing like it's 2010, even in 2030. Over your local network, you can monitor prints through the internal camera, and there's onboard AI detection for things like spaghetti or lifting prints. It runs locally, not in the cloud. Overall, using it feels like what it should be. You are using a prosumer industrial 3D printer, and it feels exactly like that. There's a moment with this printer that stands out to me, and it's not when it's printing. It's when the job is finished, the chamber cools down, and the RGB light inside shifts to green. There's no fanfare, no flashy animation. It just quietly lets you know that the print is done and it worked. Now, I know that a lot of machines out there have that now, but the first time I experienced it was back in January or February because I've had this machine quite some time. And now it's, it is nice to see that there are a lot more machines on the market that are kind of emulating that. Now, beyond that, that light, it's incredibly practical. If you're across the room or even in a print farm full of these machines, those RGB status lights tell you at a glance whether something went wrong or if it's time to harvest finished prints. If you are interested in the F200, you can head over to the Fusion 3 website and take a look there, contact them for current pricing. I do know that the price is probably somewhere around $3,000 and that kind of fits, that's pretty normal for a prosumer industrial type of 3D printer, um, especially one that's made here in the US. So who is this printer for? Well, it's not for the person trying to save 20 bucks on a knockoff nozzle. It's not for your cosplay armor or your one-off vase mode prints. It's for engineers, labs, schools, people who need parts to finish on time, on tolerance, and without issue. Is it expensive? Yes, it is. But so is wasted time, and so is a printer that fails when it matters most. And this is really Fusion's target customer. Businesses and people looking for solid solutions with top-notch domestic customer service, not just the lowest price shopper. I've printed PLAs, ASAs, and polycarbonates, and this thing just delivers. It's relatively quiet, um, it's reliable, and I've been printing with it for months in the studio. And here's the part I think I like best. It's made here in the US. And when you need help, you can talk to a real life human. So if you're curious and you have real questions, don't ask me. Well, hold on, you can ask me, but also ask them. Call them, call Fusion 3. Talk to the people who actually build them. As always, I'll have links in the description for everything that we talked about, and be sure to let me know, you know what you think about the F200, and uh, I'll see if I can get Fusion 3 to come over here and read the comments. So if you have something to say, yeah, address it to them. And uh, thanks to all of you who support this channel, and to our YouTube members and our Patreon crew, thank you. All of this would not be possible without you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.